Welcome to this Unreal 4 tutorial on um, Sequencer, um, which is uh, taken over from Matinee. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use the two different cameras. So we've got standard camera and cinematic cameras and what are the differences. I'm also going to show you how you can use, you can trigger animations to play, uh, whether that's off a rig or just in the world itself. Um, and I'm also going to show you how you can trigger particles as well as doing fade in and fade out tracks. So let's get started. I will start off by just apologising. I'm just getting over a cold, so I sound really bunged up, and I might cough. Cough. I'll try and mute my mic before I do that and edit it out. Um, but so what I did was I started with a third-person template. Now that just gives me this camera. So if I play it, I can play around and look around in third person. And for today's demonstration, this is all I need to do really. I just need this area. Okay, so I started with third person. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the mannequin here, which is part of this blueprint. I'm just going to actually put the anim uh, the the um, where is it? Where is it? This one here, and just drag it into scene. Okay, and this will come apparent later on. But this is going to be our focus of our scene. So it's not going to be a very interesting cinematic, but hopefully it will give you an insight on how, how you can start to create more interesting cinematics from, from some of the basic skills. So I'm going to start off by actually creating myself a sequence. So if I come under here, under cinematics, and go add level sequence, I'm now going to have to name it, so demo camera, click save. And this is going to open up my sequencer. Now I prefer it to be on this bar here, so I'm just going to drag it down here so I've got it here. Now it's going to come empty, which is what we want, because we want to put the cameras in ourselves. So to begin with, I'm actually going to create a cinematic camera. It would help if I spelled that right. And I'm just going to drag it into scene. I'm just going to move it up so it starts roughly at the feet level, like that. So when you click on the camera it's going to give you this preview which is really good. You can actually pin this, but I tend to keep it unpinned so if I click off it I can't see it anymore. Now this is all good and well and I'll just go through some of the settings for this here um, as well as showing you a standard camera. So if I just put a camera and bring that in, you'll see it's a different colour but by default it doesn't have any of these cinematic uh, options. It has aspect ratio and it has field of view and it has all this colour grading and tone, um, your lens flares, auto exposure, motion blur, all this that you can play around with. But it doesn't, it isn't set up for cinematics. So the difference between these two cameras is that this one has a lot more options. So we can change what type of camera it is. So if we were doing IMAX, we can change it. We can also change lens setting. So we can have 12 millimeter prime, 30. We can go custom. I'm just gonna put the universal zoom back on. And we can also change the focus settings. So at the moment, it's not very focused on our character. So I can actually take this uh, little lapel tool, sample tool, and I can click on there and it's going to give me my centimeters. So that's 90 centimeters away. So now it's focused in on this character, so if I move this up and down you can see that my character stays in focus constantly. Okay. If I was to say for example focus in on the stairs, it's going to give me a difference it's going to be blurred and it's going to focus in on those stairs. Okay. Now, this is a basic setting, so this can be used for the camera to start off with, but you can actually keyframe these options in the camera, and I'll show you those in a minute. So, you can also tell this camera to look at, so you can enable a track. So, if you wanted to always look at this actor, it can do. So, for example, if I select the camera again, and then select my um, mannequin and go enable 
it's going to always look at where the pivot is for that object. Now, for this, it's not that great because why would I be looking at his ankles? So we're going to turn that off. But if the pivot was somewhere here, the camera would look at it. So let's um, let's clear that because we don't want to do that. Let's reset my camera back. Uh, there you go. Let's put it down to its feet. So now I'm going to add my camera into here. So with it selected, I'm just going to delete this camera because I don't need it. I'm going to now go here, act as a sequence. I'm going to find the camera here. One thing I am going to do is going to rename this. If I remember how you do it. Ah, here we go. I'm going to call this shot one. And in this camera, I've got camera components. So as before, I can keyframe. So for example, if I wanted to frame this, so I can keyframe this, select this, and go hit, hit enter. That's going to set me a keyframe here. And then say I wanted to focus this somewhere else. So for example, let's um, focus this on the um, stairs. I'm just going to put this to a whole number. You can see that we can change the focus of it in this editor here. I'm just going to delete that and delete that. If you wanted to do all of this at the same time, so I'm going to change that to back to 90. Uh, we can just click enter and it will keyframe everything. So the top group with everything in, if you press enter that will keyframe all three. If you just want to do it individually you select the, the property and then hit enter and it will only do one. So for example if I click on these, left click, I can actually delete these and then I can just keyframe one. Uh, if I go back on this and press enter, I can also hold left mouse button, drag marquee tool, and I can delete it in that way. So I'm just pressing delete to do this. So I'm keeping it at those settings because I'm happy with them. And if I look at the camera, you can see this is what I want. So let's just. Uh, Make sure this is set. Okay, well, that's probably a bit too much. Let's go 90 or 80. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm happy with that. So you can see here. Now, to move the camera, we're going to animate it on the transform here. So if I select the transform and hit enter, because this is going to be our starting position here, and then it's 150. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to move the camera make sure you untick this to move so you can come out of it I'm going to move it up I just selected it again by left clicking it to see I'm going to go there that didn't work <laughs> we'll try that again I'm going to move it to here 150 I'm going to select the camera, I'm going to move it up, and then I'm going to keyframe it. Okay. Now, I'm just going to delete those because I don't need them. And now you can see that the camera is now moving up and down. So if we click on the camera here and hit, okay, so that's that's good. We've got this. It's all ready. It's done. So we've got our first camera shot that we want. Now, there's going to be one thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to do it slightly bigger. There we go. You can see here we've got the mannequin. So again, I'm just going to delete that in a minute and show you how to put that in. So I'm going to select the mannequin and I'm going to go track, act as a sequence. I'm going to select the SK mannequin. Now. Now I have this in here and I can add some animations to it. So under animations, I can click here and go idle. Uh, where's the idle? Okay. 
So if I just move that. So all I did with there was I stretched it out. So it's at 79 frames and I'm going to stretch it out to 150. So if I press play now, I'm hitting spacebar. You can see now it's playing its idle animation on the mesh. So I'll do that again. So select my mannequin. I'm just going to slightly move him up a little bit. Uh, let's take him off grid a minute. There you go. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab my mannequin, add uh, actor to sequence, SK mannequin, and I'm just going to click the animation and go idle, and then drag it out. Okay. Now if you've got a looping animation, this will work perfectly. This is why you, you might need to go in to your animations and change them a little bit. So now we've got our camera set up. But we haven't got our, direct, our director group set up. So if I press play here, you'll see that. But we need to set up our director group. So to do that, I'm just going to unselect that. I'm going to track, I'm going to camera cut track. Okay. And then when I'm on zero, I'm going to add a camera. Now it knows it's got this Cine Actor 2. Okay. So it's actually a little bit bigger than I need. 400. I'm just going to move this to 300. So this is the stop point. Gonna make sure that's set to zero. Hit play again. You'll notice that now this is now tracked up. Okay. So now we can create a new shot. Uh, so I'm just gonna untick this. Because if I move this around, if I move around when this is on, it's gonna move the camera, which is not what we want. So make sure that's always unticked when you want to set up anything in scene. So the first camera I'm going to do is a um, pan around. Now I'm just going to set this up. So it's roughly where I want it. Yep. Now if I try and animate this around, it's going to be a pain in the backside. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to attach an actor to it. And I did another video like this in Matinee where I use a hidden actor to actually rotate the camera around the shot. So let's let's do that. So I'm just going to type in here, actor. I'm just going to drag in an empty one. I'm just going to roughly put it where I want it. And because the pivot of this, this camera is going to focus in on this pivot. So I'm just going to rename this to... Um, I always thought you could rename that. Okay, <laughs> I've actually forgot how to rename it. Okay, well, when I figure that out, I'll try it again. But so let's. Uh, so once I've got the actor, I'm going to attach this camera wherever I put it. I'm going to drag it, left click, and put it under the actor here. Okay. What that's going to do is now, whenever I move this, it's going to move the camera with it. So, for example, let's try and get this into the center. So roughly about there. Okay, and then let me turn that back on. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the the actor instead of the camera. Um, so let's just focus this first. So 
happy. You noticed I'm also rounding up, so 